everyone, welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I am doing an updated part two to my how to mix resin video. If you wanna watch part one, you can do so here, but everything that's there is gonna be here, plus I'm adding in a whole bunch of more awesome tips that I wish I knew sooner. So I know this is a longer video, but everything that I have to say in this video is so vital to learning and working with resin properly. So I urge you to watch the whole thing. And then if you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I love to be able to help out. So let's get started. This right here is a thermometer. You can point it at whatever you want. You can see I'm having lots of fun pointing it at everything in my garage, showing you how it reads the temperature. Now I have my resin right in front of the heater right now. So it is reading very hot, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it up and then I'm gonna take the temperature again. Because if you notice, the heater is just pointed at one side, so that back side isn't getting as much heat. So after you mix it up, it will actually drop in temperature. I'm gonna be mixing up the resin and just pouring it right on top of these wood panels. I actually have a pour right here that I didn't like, and I need the resin to be a lot thicker. So I'm going to be mixing it cooler. Now there is a difference between starting your mix while your resin is cooler and starting your mix when your resin is warmer and both will be shown here in this video. To mix properly you are going to need this thermometer. You are going to need two mixing sticks. I like to use the silicone spatulas. They're easy to handle and the resin pops right off so you can reuse them and you need two cups. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Two, two, and then your one. We're gonna take one of these and one of these and we're gonna set them aside for now. And we are going to measure out and pour our first batch of resin. I'm gonna start with the hardener because this is the thinner one. I'm gonna start with the hardener on the bottom. The reason I'm gonna do this is because, and I actually used to do it opposite because it's easier to measure the hardener second. But the reason I started doing it this way is because I have had better, fuller mixes when I start with the hardener on bottom because it's easier to mix all that thick resin in because the hardener comes off the sides and the bottoms easier than the resin does. So pouring the thinner one in first is going to help you out drastically. You'll notice as I pour the resin, it is actually quite thick coming out of the jug. That already tells me that this particular mix is going to start colder. And then when I wait for it to get hotter, then it's going to be thick still. Okay, does that make sense? If you start thick, it will pour thick. If you start thin, where your resin is super hot, which I will show you after this mix, that's when I do my second layer, if you start thin, it will pour thin, but both times, if you're waiting for it to get extremely hot, you are gonna have less working time. Just know that when it starts thick, your working time, if you're waiting for it to get to 100 degrees, like me, is going to be very, very short, which you will actually see here. If you can wait for your resin to get hotter, that's also gonna give you a stronger cure. You do not need to add more hardener, you just need to follow the manufacturer's directions of whatever ratio. This resin is a one-to-one -one resin, which means one part hardener, one part resin, and then mix. Do not add extra hardener because you've had a bad cure and you think that adding extra hardener will make it harder. That's not the case. Temperature, especially with this resin, because it's such a fantastic resin, it is super strong. Temperature is what makes all that difference. So let's see what it's at. Okay, it's actually down to 67 now. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep working with it just like we normally would. And we're gonna mix. And we're gonna time this and we're gonna make sure we mix for at least three minutes. Now notice how when I'm mixing 
all this together, you do get a bunch of streaks in there. That's that cloudiness. We are going to mix until all of that is gone. So make sure it's at least three minutes. Okay, as I'm mixing, I'm gonna take this flat side and I'm gonna scrape along the sides. And then I'm gonna zigzag up and down on the bottom to make sure that I'm scraping the bottom. I zigzag because that also forms less bubbles. If you want even less bubbles, then you do need the hotter resin because that's going to be easier to mix. Now, if I waited for this to get warmer, I'd have less bubbles. I keep saying that because I get that question very often is how to have less bubbles. Work with a warmer resin. If your resin is cold or lukewarm, you are going to be forcing a lot of air into that mix. And you can mix even slower for a longer period of time if you want less bubbles. So since I'm laying it out on a fairly flat surface, I don't really need to worry about that because I'm just going to use my torch to get rid of that. You can use a heat gun, but it does not get rid of the bubbles as well and also ends up pushing your resin. And mostly I don't ever wanna do that because I have a design that I love. And if I use the heat gun to get rid of bubbles, then I'm gonna push my design. If I use alcohol to get rid of bubbles, I'm gonna have that same issue. Alcohol is going to create cells and introduce a texture into my design that I may or may not want. So that's why I find a torch is one of the best ways to do it. All right, if you notice, it's getting super clear. It's beautiful. I do not see any streaks in here. That is something, it's so hard to show you on camera, but streaks are basically unmixed, cloudy streaks that go in your resin as you're mixing. You mostly will see them after you scrape the side and bring that back into the middle, then you can look and see if you see any streaks. If you do, that means you had unmixed resin on the side and you need to keep mixing that in. Now, here's where that second cup comes into play. You have to have a second cup and a second spoon. The first spoon I'm gonna go ahead and use to scrape this first cup into the second one, and then I'm not going to use it anymore. So I'm gonna scrape it, and then I'm gonna set this cup and the spatula aside. Okay, I got a lot. In this circumstance, it's okay to scrape because we are remixing. Now, here is where you would add your color. Um, or if you need to, you can divide it out into your individual cups. Personally, I like to mix it again for here for at least a minute, and then I divide it out into my individual cups. Ooh, see, I got some streaks right there. That was from that first mix. And you notice, I honestly thought that it was fully mixed. This is why we do this second cup and have a brand new spatula. So there's nothing unmixed. You will catch everything this way and you will have the best, strongest cure. Okay, so do this for at least a minute and then you can divide it out into your individual cups and whatever your most solid color is going to be, like if you're gonna be doing a countertop or an art piece that has a white base or black base, that color is gonna go in this cup still. So you'll just divide out a little into individual cups for different color. Since I am doing the exact same color, I'm just gonna show you when I'll divide it out and then put my color in it. I'm gonna be using the blue steel today as, uh, as well as a blue glitter. And I'm gonna mix those two together. I actually think I might add in a teal glitter too. I think that'll be pretty. Oh, look at that. So some of that is bubble, but right there is a streak. So we're gonna mix just a little bit longer. It's always on your mixing stick that you just, you never get it all. So that's why we switch to that second mixing stick and mix it all back in. 
Beautiful. Okay, so at this point is when I would divide it out into my little cups. But like I said, I'm working with blue steel and blue glitter, and I'm not going to be dividing out into smaller cups because I just have the one color. Powdered pigment, you want to keep to a one tenth rule. One part powdered pigment, 10 parts resin. You can always add more powder. I actually have a video that I will put right up here so you can watch and hear the description on how much to add of different additives for resin. Doing the same thing, scraping the sides and the bottom. Yes, it's messy adding the color on top, but this is going to allow it to mix in the best way. If you put it on the bottom, you're gonna have issues with um, some of that powder staying on the bottom, and then it's going to come out in powdered chunks in your artwork, and we don't want that to happen. All right, this looks absolutely beautiful. Let's check the temperature. So this is at 72 degrees. And we're gonna wait for this to get to 100 degrees before pouring. You don't need to take your stirring stick out because um, what we're gonna do is once we re-temp this, each time we're gonna go ahead and stir it because we're taking the temperature of the top, not the bottom. And so you wanna make sure that you're mixing it all up and then taking your temperature so that way you have one solid temperature throughout the whole thing. Okay, so if you need a lot of working time, this would be the time that you're gonna go ahead and pour out your resin. Only if you need a lot of working time. If you are a beginner, or um, if you just have a lot that you need to do on your project, then at 80 degrees, 79.53, I'm close enough. So at that point, you're gonna go ahead and pour out. Please remember, because you started this mix thick, it will still pour out thick, even if you are pouring out here at 80 degrees. So the reason I'm doing this is because once it hits to 80, it does get hotter a lot quicker because it's causing that reaction inside the cup uh, because we have a lot of epoxy in here. If you have smaller cups, it's not gonna happen as quickly. So make sure that you keep feeling it See if it's starting to feel really warm to the touch. And if so, you're getting closer. That's if you don't have a thermometer to keep checking it. Personally, I recommend this. I have it on my Amazon list, uh, which is in the description below. And then I do want to also point out that I'm using the Faux Rizzle Nouveau resin. I have found this to be one of the strongest resins. And it also is BPA free. Now that doesn't mean you don't want to use your PPE. I recommend that for every resin. I wanted to go ahead and point out really quickly because when I was teaching someone about the streaks and then they started mixing their metallic pigment in and they saw that the metallic created streaks, notice the darker color lines, they thought that that meant it was unmixed. So <laughs> I just wanted to make sure to point that out for any other beginners because I did not ever think of that. Um, is that you're just looking for the streaks in the clear resin and then when you mix your colors in you're just looking to make sure that you've mixed the color fully. So if you're using a powdered pigment you want to make sure that you're mixing that powder and not noticing any powdered chunks. The streaks at this point are just the metallic effect. Okay, we've reached 100 degrees. So I'm just gonna scrape the side here one more time and pour it out. Now again, I'm dividing this into two trays, so I don't want all of it to come into here. Notice how it's super, super thick. Okay, now that I've worked it a little bit, it should cool down a little. Yep, there it goes. So we want to spread that out as quickly as possible. Again, I do not need a lot of working time, so this is okay. Okay. 
and this will help it to run less on the sides too. So if you notice, it's not immediately dragging down, which I love, but it will set up very quickly and cure very hard. And the last thing I did, I just took my glove and I went side to side like this. And now I did a blowtorch right on top to pop the bubbles. And I'll do that again because uh, there are still quite a few bubbles. And then I'm done with this layer. If you notice, the glitter is staying on the side very well too, which is fantastic. Okay, now we are on to the top layer on top of these beautiful trays. And if you notice, I still have my two cups, I still have my two spatulas, and I have my thermometer. I'm also still working with my Nouveau resin. If you guys would like to get this resin and save 15%, make sure you use my code BOSS at their website, which I have put in the description below. Now what's different and unique about this top layer is I'm actually mixing the resin extremely hot. I did not wait for it to cool down and kind of thicken back up. I poured it when it was basically watery resin, um, not actual water though. I feel like I need to clarify that with some people. You don't want water in resin. Um, but no, I just kept it in front of the heater until it was really, really hot because that helped loosen it up and get it extremely thin. This is gonna help keep bubbles away. It's also gonna mix easier, quicker, and it's gonna cure extremely strong, but you're also going to be able to have a thin resin to work with. This will cut your working time in half though if you are heating it up this much and then working with it. So keep that in mind before you do this particular type of method. I'm mixing for three minutes, and then I'm gonna switch it into my second cup and mix again. I am only gonna mix in my second cup for one minute, and then I'm gonna pour it into my individual cups because I am working with the Gatsby, which is the dark purple, and I'm also gonna mix in some purple glitter with that, and the blue steel again, and I'm also going to work with a light turquoise, all from the Faux Rizzle website, um, which again is in the description below. When I pour into those individual cups, that's when I'm going to make sure that I'm mixing for about another two minutes. So after you've mixed your three minutes in your first cup, you pour into your second cup, mix for one minute, pour into your individual cups, and mix for two more minutes. I hope that simplifies it for you because it is so important to make sure your resin is fully, fully mixed at every stage. Now that I'm done mixing up my colors, um, I also had a white that I forgot to mention, and that one was also from the Faux Rizzo website. So my teal and my whites were actually pigment pastes. All right, the first thing I want to point out now that I am working with a super, super hot resin, this is now 111 degrees. It is extremely hot. It was even warm th through the cup, through the gloves, on my hands while I was mixing. Um, but if you notice, as I'm pouring these out, they are extremely liquid. They're very fluid. It is extremely easy to work with. And I love that about having the hotter, thinner resin. It does cut your working time in half. I want to keep saying that and expressing the importance of that. You're not going to have the 40 minute working time if you're waiting to even start mixing until your resin was 99 degrees like mine was. So the best recommendation I can give you is to really practice, 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 practice all sorts of different ways. And if you have that thermometer, it's going to help you because you can take notes and say, hey, I started mixing when it was 67 degrees, like the beginning of this video. When I poured it out at 100 degrees, it was super thick. And now this one, I mixed at 99 degrees and I poured out at 111 degrees and it was super thin because when I started mixing, it was extremely hot already. But note your working times too. The first one, if I would have poured it out right away, I would have had a long working time, likely would have had to use my heat gun through the whole thing just to keep it sort of warming up and fluid more because it would still be thick. 
this one because I started it so thin. It's super thin, easy to work with, but again, half the working time. And that's it, everyone. I am pretty sure I've answered every single question that has been thrown my way when it comes to mixing epoxy in this video. But if I did not, please do not hesitate to put it in the comments below. I really love to be able to help people out. So if this did help you at all, it would help me tremendously if you guys smash that thumbs up button and hit subscribe and share this video to one of your resin art friends so they can benefit from this know-how as well. Have an amazing day, everyone.